there are a lot of Christians in the West today uh, who, who are like the kid who skipped to the end of the book, that, that, that we know some truth about what this book says about sex and marriage, but we're maybe not totally sure about why. We know maybe six or seven passages and we, we kind of know how to reference and cite those, but we're not sure like the logic that holds this whole thing together. And so what we can begin to do is we can just start to feel embarrassed about the, what the Bible says. And we still hold on to a belief that this is God's word, but we also kind of are taken in the spirit of our age that says, but this isn't a good word. And so we're stuck in this weird place where we believe the Bible, but we're in, embarrassed by it. And so then when the topic of sexuality comes up, we just shrink back in our chair and hope that our non-Christian friends don't ask what we think, because if they asked us what we think, we know they would be mortified. As I began to study what the entirety of this book has to say, here's what I have found, and here's maybe the main thing I want you to hear today. The Bible not only teaches different answers about the appropriate place for sex, the Bible offers us a completely different story about sex than the culture around us. And it's the kind of story in which if you take the Bible's answers and understand it inside of that story, these answers actually begin to make sense. And they actually, you're gonna think I'm crazy, but these answers actually become beautiful. 